Okay, I just got a great question from a student about um, longest and shortest wavelength of certain transitions. Um, so before I get into that actual question, I want to give a little bit of background. Um, so the transitions, when we're talking about um, electrons falling or rising in, a, in an atom, hydrogen atom or a single electron atom, is something like this. The stairs, kind of, we look at it like a stair step, it kind of goes like this and get smaller, the distance between these gets smaller as you go up and up and up and up and up. So this would be like n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, so n equals one there, n equals four, and on and on and on and on and on. Okay, so um, remember that when we're talking about wavelength and its relationship to energy, we see it, um, that energy is, um, proportional to one over wavelength, right? So that means when wavelength goes up, energy goes down and vice versa. So, um, and, and that should maybe make some sense. So for example, if you're if these are actual stairs and you're dropping a ball or something like that and you drop a ball and it falls down from here versus it falling down from up here, this would make a bigger sound. And we think of sound um, kind of like the, the energy emitted from a wave. So if this falls farther, this is going to have a high energy, but a lower wavelength, as opposed to something that falls just a short distance. Let's say, what if it fell from, from here to here? It's a shorter distance, right? Um, so if we go from electron from an n equals three to an n equals one, um, it's going to have a lower energy, right? And a higher wavelength. So they're just inversely proportional. Um, and we could have, what I probably should have done is the equation I try to stick to is a or E equals HC over lambda. So this is kind of the proportionality right here. Um, so the main thing is if energy goes, um, goes down, the wavelength goes up and vice versa. So the question was this. So what is the shortest wavelength and the longest wavelength? And it gives these four different transitions. Well, right away you're like, whoa, n equals 2 to n equals 11 or n equals 3 to n equals 12. Those are big transitions. But one thing to keep in mind is that they get smaller and smaller as you go up. So it's not always easy just to visually compare, look at it, and say, hey, which one has the biggest magnitude difference between the final and the initial? Um, so you can't necessarily do that. So what you do instead um, is remember kind of the... the um, energy equation, the big equation that we use, it's E equals HC over lambda equals H nu, sometimes I do those in different orders, equals negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times 1 over N final squared minus 1 over N initial squared. The key to this is this portion right here. If if this is really, really large, if you have like, a, if this ends up equaling one in some instances, then this will be the largest energy possible. And so what you wanna do is kind of compare the difference of one, one over n final squared minus one over n initial squared for each of these uh, at times when it's not so obvious. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we'll do one over um, we'll, we'll use these as our n finals, and we'll use these as our n initials. So 1 over 3 squared minus 1 over 2 squared. And let's see what that comes out to. We'll do it in a second. Here we'll do 1 over 7 squared minus 1 over 3 squared. We'll do 1 over 12 squared minus 1 over 3 squared. And then we'll do... 1 over um, 11 squared minus 1 over 2 squared. So again, in cases where it's not obvious um, to visually look at it and see, uh, for mainly the C and the D are the two that are really close and, and might not be as obvious, uh, you're going to want to do something like this and compare them. So let's go ahead and do each of them. I'll do them real quick. So the first one, 1 divided by 9 minus 1 divided by 4. And I get an answer, and I'm just going to take the magnitude, equals um, 0.14. We move on to the next one. 1 divided by 49. So 1 divided by 9. And get an answer of 
0 0.091. The next one, divided by 1.4 minus I get an answer of 0 0.104. And then 1 divided by minus 1 divided by 2. And here I get an answer of 0 0.24. So then you're just going to want to look at the um, at the highest number here. This one ends up being the highest, which means it's going to be 24% of the maximum amount of energy. So this one would have the highest energy, and therefore by association, it's going to have the lowest wavelength, as opposed to this guy right here, which will have the lowest energy, it's only 9% of this 2.18 times 10 to the 18 joules, negative 18 joules. So it's going to have the lowest energy and the highest wavelength. So again, these weren't obvious. Um, these weren't very obvious from the start. Um, you can look at this difference and say, okay, well, this is a difference of nine. This is a difference of nine. And we know that this step for number two right here is bigger than the step for number three. So that might have been the way to do it really quickly. Um, but then when it comes to kind of comparing these two, you almost have to do it just to, just to make sure. So hope that helps.